so now we will do the uh, second session of the CPU design. So here we will design now another circuit called as register file. So I'll do everything in the main and then I'll copy it to another file. So I'll remove this. Excuse block. me, sir. Uh, so, uh, can you hold you your show... uh, can you hold your query for some time? Another 45 minutes? No, sir. I just the ending of your thing. How could you turn that ALU into a compact thing in the main, sir? Yeah, okay. I'll do it. Now listen to this. Okay. So recording an idea, Mohan. Uh, yes, sir. It is on, sir. It is on. It is on. Check money. Yes, yes, sir. It is on, sir. Okay. On. So now we will design uh, the ALU file. So now what is required to design the file? I'll go to the main. I'll go to the main. So now I will design the register file. Now, what is required? First of all, I require eight registers. Each register of size, four bits, and all are synchronous circuits. That means that clock enabled or clock triggered circuits. So I'll go to the memory, click on the register, not the shift register, because we are not interested in shifting. You want only for storing the data. So register, click here. And then before start placing all the required registers, see the features, what is required to make the register work. So I build some temporary circuit around this register, understand the working of a register. So then I'll build the whole of the register file. Now keep the cursor in the D. That means that whatever the value we want to store to the register has to be fed to the D input. So write enable. That means that you have to make this pin equal to one for the register to work. And this is a positive edge clock. And only in the positive edge of the clock, the data placed on the data D is copied to the Q output. Now select the size of the data bus. Since we require a four bit register, each register four bit, I'll select the data bits to be four bits. Four bits. Now I will only for demonstration purpose, we'll put some circuit and then demo later. So I'll take the data input, make it four bit. So connect to the data input. Okay. So right enable, I just for the temporary, I'll make it one. So I'll just take one single input pin. I'll connect to that clock. Where is the clock is available? It's available in the wiring circuit. The left side, you can just see that there's a wiring is there in the clock is there. So take the clock input and then connect the clock input to the R. I've done it. I want to watch the output. Now take an output pin, configure as a four bit, four bit, and then connect the output to the up here. Now we will observe the working of this one. Now I'll go to the simulation mode. You can look at the finger symbol, click on that. Now let's say if I say one, the data, even though I change, it's not copied to the output. There are two reasons. Number one, make the right enable is equal to one. I made it. Even the right enable is one, the data apply to the input is not copied to the output because why it's a triggered circuit it's a clock enabled circuit only the clock transition can bring the data from the input to the output now i'll give one clock pulse so clicking clock two times is nothing but one clock pulse because positive edge and the negative edge both you have to so you have to generate that's why one click is one edge other click is another edge. so clicking two times is nothing but one clock cycle so now i click on two times now one is copied now i'll change the data one zero zero one Again, apply the clock. Now I got the one zero zero one. Like this, how the registers is going to work now. Having understood the registers, now we'll go to the editing mode. Now we'll read the register file. So I'll remove the now inputs, outputs which I have placed for only for understanding purpose. So now, now I had to place this registers in a register file. Totally eight registers required. So I just zoom in make it small as much as possible possible so i will keep the center remove any of the wires you would have placed okay now i will copy uh, from this circuit itself control c control v i can use it and can copy all the registers before copying some configuration required you can finish now only for the first one let's say data which is called a four bit there's an option called show in register tab is there so that no is there, you make it yes, it's required later. 
So I have configured for the register four bits and the show in register tab is equal to yes. I have to make it yes. Now I'll start copying from the same thing. Control C, Control V. So I'll place it down again. Control V. Third one like this. I'll place totally eight registers which are required for our CPU. So now what you can do is you can zoom in as small as possible so that you can able to view all the eight registers. So now I have put three, four, five, six, seven, eight registers. I will name all the registers. Select one by one. Let's say first select, go to properties, label, capital or zero. You put it now. Similarly, select the second one, label them as R1. Next R2. R3. R4. R5. R6. Then R7. So now I have labeled all the registers into this one. Now we have to build the circuit. Let's build writing circuit first. What do you mean by writing? If I have one input data of four bit, I must be in a position to write the data into any one of the registers. So what we do is first, we will short clocks of all the clocks of all the registers and connect to one common clock. We'll make it. Then we will short all the data inputs connect to one data input. Only thing is through the WOE, we will select one of the eight registers so that data will go to one of the destination registers based on the clock. So we will now, the next thing that we do is we will chart all the clocks. Okay, I've shot all the clocks and connected the clock to the one common clock. Now go to the wiring. There's a clock is available temporarily. So clock we are giving from outside the module, but for testing purpose, I'll place it here. So and connect the clock to the I'll connect it temporarily, I'll connect it for testing purpose. Now, once you name all R0 to R7 and make in the properties the what is called as uh, show in register app, yes, please verify going to the properties. There's a next called state is there. All the registers should be listed here. R0 to R7 should be listed here. So just see that every property give the name from R0 to R7. So make sure 0 is a 0 number only, R0 to R7. Now go to the state, check all the registers R0, R7. You should see like this in the version of the software, which I've shared with you, you can able to see that in some version, you may not able to see it. It's okay. It's okay. You can able to see the result contents and whatever the value is there in the registers, it will be displayed on the top of the register. If you zoom, if you zoom the figure, you can just see that there is a value zero is there. That means that this is the value available at this moment in the register. You can always go to the simulation mode, the finger, click on that and you can change the value. For example, I want to store two here. I can store it here. Click on that. I can store one here. I can store three, store four like this. I can store all the values. What is required into the registers at the runtime. So it's in the simulation mode only it's possible. So seven and then eight. Now look at that left side. All the registers are listed with the values. So like that, you can go to the simulation mode. You can feed that values. That values will be there stored in the registers. Now we have finished naming the registers, listing them in the scan, and they're feeding the contents into that and feeding the clock for that. Now, so we will short all the data inputs and connect to one data input. We will short.
So now I have shorted all the inputs. I'll take one input pin of size four bits, size four bits, connect that to the input bus. So now whatever the data, which is output of ALU result. So we can feed through this input and make that goes to any one of the register. Now the challenge is the data, whatever we have placed here should reach to any one of the selected registers. How do you select one among the eight registers? We know that there's a pin called W is left out for all the registers. For any register to be get selected, the corresponding register input W should be one. So for example, if you make for R0 register W is equal to one, that means that the data, whatever placed in the input bus on the next clock pulse will be copied to the R0. So that any one of the WOE should be made one, remaining should be zero always for that. What is the way you can do it? One of the eight should be made one based on the destination register we want it. For that, a decoder like circuit can be used. But in a decoder, multi inputs, multiple outputs will be there. In this case, what? Only one input. The required register should be made one, the WE point. So we said demultiplexer is more suitable for here. So what is the demultiplexer? Like the opposite of a multiplexer. One input, many output and which has got a select lines. Connecting the select lines to the destination register. So we can keep the one which is applied to the input to the selected output. Now we'll do the, the multiplexer portion. Now I'll go to the multiplexers, select the demultiplexer, place the multiplexer. I zoom that portion for a moment. Now look at the demultiplexer. What are the requirement now here? Should have an eight outputs and the output Eight means select input should be three. So now I got an eight output. Now what is the size of the bus here? The each line of the multiplexer, I'm connecting what? WOE pin of the register. WOE is nothing but one pin. It's not a bus, it's a single pin. That's why the data bit is one. It is not four or something like that. It's always one only. That means that outputs are nothing but eight, each of size one pin. Now what is an input? Input permanently will keep one, so whichever output is selected, that becomes one. So what we will make? So we will make constant. We will go to the wiring, select the constant, select the constant, make the constant is equal to one, which is already there and connect to the DMX input. Now we require a select. So which select? What is the destination register? So I will take one input. So Change the orientation and make the data bits equal to select pins of the multiplexer is equal to so and select the input pin data pin should be three because the multiplexer select inputs are three. I connected it now. Now it's ready. Now all the outputs, all the outputs of the multiplexer should be connected to the corresponding register WOE pins and Based on the select inputs, the one which is applied to the input will be passed to one of the outputs. So that means that you are applying one to any one of the register WOE pins. If I say one here, the one will be transferred to the, the output one. So with this logic, I can select one among the eight registers by applying the proper select inputs. So now we will connect this to the WOE pins. So you can just move to the left as much as possible. So now we'll start connecting the one by one to the W. Now the first one. Similarly, the second one. 
Now we can see that I have completed the input section of the register file. Now I will test the logic. So you can just watch for a moment here. See how testing will be done. So now I'll go to the simulation mode. I'll keep some data. Let's say 1001. That is a 9. I want to move the 9 to the register 6. So what is the number 6 means? It is nothing but 11. Zero, uh, 101. So 101 is the R6. So I'll place 101 yeah. here. Now you can just see that whenever change the green color, the light green color has come here. That means that that is a output which is asserted, which is selected. Now, now the data which is 101, which is nothing but what? So 9, you can always see that. You can click on the bus. If you click on the bus, you can see the 9. So the 9 has coming here. Sometimes you may not get nine here. You may get some signed value. What you have to do? So each one of you can observe. Go to the file. Go to the preferences. Go to the preferences. Go to the layout. And then second radix when while poked is there. It will be decimal will be there. You make it hexadecimal. So second radix when the wire is poked. So if you keep on any wire, it shows the hexadecimal value. Otherwise, it shows signed number. So make second radix when while poked hexadecimal. Then close that. So if you do like that, you keep the cursor on any of the bus, it will show an excel decimal value. Otherwise, it show in decimal, sign decimal. It means it takes as a first one as a sign number, minus something it show. So to change that, go to the file, go to the preferences, so go to the layout, second radix when by the show, make it as a it will be decimal, it will be there. You make it as a excel decimal, then close it. So now I can see that nine is available here. 9 is reached every place, but you have to make sure that it copies to only one place. Now, which is the place is supposed to copy R6 because we are given the address. R6 is a destination register. Now, when does it copy? I'll give a clock pulse. Now I'll give one clock pulse. Now I'll give one clock pulse two times. See that 9 is being copied here. You can see the state now. 9 is copied. What? So, like that, each one of you has to verify in the beginning whether your connections is proper. Mm -hmm. How do you verify? Apply the data. What is the maximum data? F minimum data is zero. Select enter some data. Then select to which register you want to go from 0, 0 to R0 to so one. So the eight. Eight means one one one. Zero, one 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 means eight. That is a register seven. So since we are starting from R0, it is a seventh register. So then you give one clock pulse. The selected input will go to the particular register. So now I verified that one. Now we'll go to the other portion. After this, I'll give some time so that you can also work on this one. So now what are you supposed to do it now? Now, as per the diagram, whatever we designed, whatever we designed earlier, we have finished one operation. If you look at that, so you have finished one operation. What operation finished? Writing into the register file, we have finished it. Writing into the register file, we have finished it. Now, now I have to bring the contents of the register file into two buses, A bus and a B bus. That's what we are supposed to do it. Now, let's build one logic first. How do we bring the data from any one of the eight register into the bus A? So what is the type of logic circuit we required? Many outputs are there. That is many outputs are there. And I have to select one of the output and bring it to the outside. That means that a multiplexer can do the job. So we will have a multiplexer here. The multiplexer, Take 
eight inputs and based on the input whatever i give to the multiple select lines one output will be available that is connected to the bus a so what we'll do is we'll go to the multiplexer select the multiplexer place the multiplexer see all the connections what is required for the multiplexer first configure the multiplexer now it is requiring so three select lines so make the select lines for three now i got a eight now here you should be very careful because now every output of a register is a four bit in the previous case w is a one line here every q is nothing but what four bits so four bits means every input of a multiplexer should be four bit so select the data bit and make it four bit now all the connections now you can make for the multiplexer so i am just make the the first one you can place properly wherever required because you have to make a lot of connections here so now i'll make the first connection to the input zero next take the second one and connect to the second input similarly third register you can connect to the similarly the fourth register fifth one So now I have connected so to the multiplexer all the outputs of the register the four bits available now I'll take one pin so output pin configure that pin is equal to four bit data bits and then I'll connect the output of the multiplexer now based on the select inputs here one of the inputs will be connected and get to the output so we'll make the select input so i'll just make select input it will be of three bits change the direction so i will connect that to here so i'll just zoom this and show you the connection of this only this portion now see that all the eight outputs have been connected to the inputs now this is a select one i just connect to the multiplexer select line now based on the the select line the contents of any one of the register are brought here now you can see the state here now already we have got some contents one two eight something stored there in r6 stored here now let's say now i collected zero 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 that means that one is available here now i change that let's say i'll make it r1 so i'll go to the simulation mode i'll go to the simulation mode and say one so now one means what r1 two is appeared here now similarly let's say i'll make r7 so r r5 will make it let's say so 101 you can just see that 101 is an r5 contains of r5 is what 9 9 is appeared here now i make all 11 just see that all 11 means sar 7 8 yeah. 8 is available so like this now you are in a position to bring the contents of any of the eight registers by proper selection and bring into the bus one of the bus let's we call it a a bus this will be connected to the a bus now you have to make same same logic so for B bus, so now what I will do is I'll take another multiplexer, I'll copy this, control C, control V, I'll put it here. Now, so now I look at the properties, look at the properties, it's eight is there, select line three is there. Now I'll drag the lines from here to the this bus. The bus, existing bus to the multiplexer, another multiplexer. So now we are preparing. The logic for the bus b so that i can read from any register 
and bring the data of the selected register to the bus B. Because this bus A, bus B are very essential to feed the data to the ALU. Because ALU requires two operands. So that's why two buses are required. So now I have brought logic here. I just connected here. Now, now take the select lines again the same thing. Place it here. Change the orientation. Make it three bits. Now connect this to here. Now similarly, now this is a B bus. So take an output pin. Make it a three bit. And connect this to now it's ready. Now see that by now go to the simulation mode. Now go to the gain finger, come to the display area, simulation mode. Now let's say I want to bring the contents of uh, go to the state R1 to the bus A, R7 to the bus, let's say bus B. Now so R1 means 0, 0, 001. I'll make 0, 0, 1. Now R1 contains 2, I got it. Now R7, I'll want to get the contents of the B bus. Now you can see that A is coming here. So now at a time by feeding the RA, which is available in the instructions itself, for example, R and R1, R2, R3, it's available. From the instruction, extract that RA, give it here. So you get the data of that register into the one bus A. Similarly, extract the RB from the instruction, place it on this input. Then what will happen? The selected value selected register value of rb is placed in the the b bus so like this now this register file whatever we are designed has the capability as a capability to write any value to any other register to read from the any of the two registers so like simulator using the simulator you have to test it every logic is working after every logic is working what we have to use now is you have to name all the inputs and outputs now input first one I'll go to the editing mode. I'll make them as a A input. So I can make as a input. I N P capital and it is input. Similarly, this is the R D. So writing to the destination register. So I'll make the label is equal to R D. Similarly, so this is the bus A selection. So I'll make as a R A. Now this is for RB. So I just selected B. I selected. So now RD is selected. RA, RB has been brought. So now this is the bus A for me. So I'll call the label as bus A. Now I'll call this as label for bus B. So now I have got a bus A, the bus B. Selection for the bus A is RA. Selection for the bus B is RB. RD selection for the destination register is RD. So, and the one is permanently placed here and the clock I have given it here. Once you test everything, this logic separately by using the clock, by using the input and all those things, then you have to remove the clock from here. You have to remove the clock and give the clock from external connection from the module because clock is not only required for this circuit. Clock is required in every place. We should have a common clock. I cannot insert or embed the clock inside a module because common clock is required. So now after testing everything, only after testing everything, remove the clock, remove the clock, give an input pin for the clock, take an input pin, one pin, one bit pin, and connect to that and name them as clock C. Okay, so it's very important. During testing of the register file, connect the clock directly so that give the clock and you can test the input is going to the different registers. After testing is done, remove the clock, select the input pin one bit make it one bit and name them as a clock so we will connect to this pin from externally the clock because clock is required for a multiple modules so now having done this one turn off this is the what is called as a register file now i'll copy all the components here control a i will just delete from here carefully when deleting it you can copy and delete later also now i'll go and create another circuit 
I will call them as a register file, register file or register whatever it is. So enter. Now inside, I'm there inside the register file. Now I will paste everything here. Now it's done. Now if I go to the main double click, nothing is there now. Now I'll click just one ALU single click. I'll bring the ALU here now. Single click register file. Bring the register file here now. Now we can see that all what is required to build the CPU is getting ready. Now CPU fundamentally requires what? Two important blocks. One is a register file. Other is a ALU. Now I can interconnect all these buses and make sure that CPU design can be completed. Make note that all the buses, whatever you name, it should be available. Input C register selection for the getting the to the A bus. Register selection for getting into the B bus or B. So register selection for a destination register. Now C is for the clock. It is not inside the clock. It's a clock pin is provided and I'm connecting clock here. Remove the clock inside. Now this is a A bus, this is a B bus. This is A bus, B bus of the ALU. Now we have finished what is required to build this CPU. Uh, basic blocks. Now I continue now inserting program counter and instruction register. Even though you are not able to complete till this time, please keep a note now. Take another 10 minutes. Make note of whatever I am doing it. And then you can, I will give a time, you can able to complete it. Now, now without file, observe now every, every step what I am doing now. Now I want to build now uh, the other logics. What are the other logics? Program counter, program memory, instruction register, and the decoder and the other control circuit. I have to build it. Now I will do one by one. Now. So first I'll go to the registers. That is nothing but memory. Take on counter. I'll put the counter here. Now to so learn here properly, what are the options for the counter and all the concepts you can learn here. Now the counter, it's a synchronous counter. It's an eight bit counter. It's available. So now one by one pin, we'll observe it and see that what are the values you're supposed to do it? Now keep the cousin and the R. That means that whenever one, this resets the counter. So during counting mode, I have to keep it zero in this pin. Now look at the second pin. It controls a loader count. When one loading happens, when zero counting happens. Since we are starting from a zero, no loading option we are providing it here. So that means that the R to be zero and the next pin load and count should be zero. So I will start both of them and connect a constant zero there. So I'll go to the wiring, take the constant. So bring it here and make the constant value is equal to zero. So I will change to zero and then I place this to here. Now, similarly, look at the next pin M3. So M3 is what up and down counter. We want to use this as an up counter because program counter always points to Next instruction to be executed will keep incrementing. So I want to keep here this pin one. Next G5. G5 is an enable pin. When multiple counters are there, you can select any one counter of your interest. That is why counters provide this pin. So G5 should be one for counting. So I have to short M3 pin to make it as an up counter and G5 one to enable the counter. So short both of them. Take a constant and make it one. So I just placed here. Now. <coughs> now. It is done. Now one is applied to this place. Now, similarly, so these two are the past clock pulses. One is for up counter, one for the down counter. Since we require clock value may update on a trigger. So we have to connect a clock here. So now what I will do is, so I will require a clock here to connect to here. Now what I will do is clock, instead of directly connecting a clock here, I will do what is called one common clock. I will name to a clock, a common clock. Use the clock wherever I require it. So we use a concept called tunnel here. So just observe what I'm doing now here. Now I'll take one common clock. I'll take a tunnel. So I'll just connect the clock to the tunnel. Now name the tunnel as whatever you require. Naming is very, very important. Capital C L K. I made it. Now, now this clock, each time I click on the clock, the tunnel name clock will get the clock. However, number of tunnels, I can create it with a name called clock. So when, since the, the one tunnel is connected to the clock, whenever, wherever you use a tunnel by name clock, clock, clock is available there. 
So now clock required at this point. Now I don't connect the clock. Clock is connected to one tunnel. I'll create another tunnel now. So I will put this clock to here. So now what I will do is I'll name this tunnel as a clock. So this is nothing but now what will I, what what it will become. So it will becomes the clock. So now you can go to the simulation mode. Just check it once. If you give a clock, see that clock is applying. You can see at the every tunnel named as a clock. So this is the concept we use it. So to create the connections to the multiple parts because making the clock line connect to every place in the circuit in a big circuit is very challenging. That's why we use a tunnel so that the circuits can be made simple. So now I've connected everything what is for the counter required. Now, so counter value in the runtime, I can change it here. I can make it zero zero. I can reload the what is the value here now. So now the counter 8 bit count is ready and where is the data is available. You can see that the data is available at this point. These are the output current value of the counter is available on this bus. It's an 8 bit bus. So you can see that 8 bits are there. So these values can be uh, available on this bus. Now the program counter has to feed the address to the program memory. So now I'll go to the memory, go to the memory. So click on the memory. Program memory is always read only memory ROM. I'll bring the memory here now. Now I'll understand what are the pins for the memory. First of all, we require a 256 into 16. Every location should be of size 16 bits. So I'll go to the properties of the ROM. So make the database width 16. So now address bit I'm keeping as a 8. That means that this memory has got to the power of 8. 8 address lines are there. So totally 256 locations are there size of each location is what 16 bit you can see that you can see the one zero 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 that means that it forms what one location contains four nibbles are there every zero represents one nibble so you can see on the left side address at the address zero zero this represents the first location next the next to four bits represent zero one address next so two next three next one four in your computers you may not have columns you may get three columns you may get two columns that depends upon the zooming and the the screen whatever selection selections you made so in my screen i'm getting a four columns so don't expect the same four columns should appear what is important is you should know that what is an address what is it content that's all you're supposed to know it you can feed into the program memory the instruction directly what you can do for that go to the simulation mode click on the first one keep feeding the data now, so we know that what are the data we are supposed to feed it. So you can refer the sheet, whatever we prepared in the morning. The contents of the first instruction is what? So C024. So I got the first instruction similarly. Now, the second instruction was C02A. So the third instruction, what we prepared in the morning? 0117. 0117, I got it. Now, fourth one, 311 six I prepared in the morning. So now I have fed four instructions to four locations. What is the address of the first one? Address the first one is what? Zero. Address of the second one is what? Two. Sorry. Address of the first one is zero. Second one is one. Next is two. The next is three. So we have what? Four locations we have used to store our program because our program size was what? Four words. We have stored it. Now like this, you can click on the on the memory address and you can store it even you can use a right click you can edit content you can feed the data and you can save it also save it or you can just close it you can enter it and just cancel it and cancel cancel in the sense you can just close the window it will be there if at all if you want to remember and store it in a text file you can always save it like this also you can do it or you can directly fill it here now so now come to the editing mode again now we have to feed uh, the connections of program counter to the program memory. This is the output of the program counter. Program counter generates address to the address bus of the memory. So I will take this one. I'll bring it close to this. So now I will connect. I just connected here. So now as soon as the address bus of the program counter output is connected, you can see that one is selected because why? 
at the moment program counter value is what zero zero that is why the first location is selected and it's pointing to the contents of the c024 so if we change the program counter contents so to, to the let's say i will change it using a clock i will click on one clock pulse now i'll give one clock pulse i'm in the simulation mode now so now see the program counter becomes one now one is coming on the address bus now location you can see the highlighted location now the memory the location one is selected give one more clock pulse now see that it becomes a two you can just see that second location now second location got selected that is it pointing to the instruction now give another clock pulse now it's see that you can point to the third instruction like that now program counter and the program memory work together to to give out the instruction which is stored in the binary format to the outside now where do you where do you keep this instruction so we will keep that instruction in a instruction register so now what we'll do is so i will take one more register called as from the memory section place the register here now i will configure the size of the register into 16 bits because every instruction is a 16 bit now 16 bits i configured it now instruction register now i'll copy uh, i'll configure the output of the program counter the program memory to the instruction register input now now we always to be enabled because there is no there is no question of selecting the we so always is to be enabled so i will go to the wiring take the constant now give it one i'll enable that wiring now done. now clock is also required for the instruction register so that i'll create a tunnel and name that as a clock now see that so clock is now connected to the instruction register now we will see that logic works or what now now go to the simulation mode make program counter 00 type 00 now see that each time you give a clock pulse the instruction c024 first it comes to the instruction register output keep watching the instruction register output given clock pulse now given clock pulse so now if i give one clock pulse see that first c024 came now pc is pointing to the next instruction to be executed give one more clock now c02e came to the instruction register now pc is pointing to the next instruction to be executed give another clock so give another clock like this you can bring the contents of the program memory one by one to the instruction register so now to make the which is the instruction you are executing little legible and looks better we will give what is called as some seven segment display type of display at the output here now for that what i have to do is i have to go to the i have to go to the input output take the display don't take the seven segment display take the hex display because we know that the bus address bus what is coming from the program counter is an eight bit in that four bits will be represented on one digit another four bits another digit since it's an hexadecimal we require a hexadecimal display so now in the editing mode i'll take the hexadecimal don't take seven segment take the hexadecimal display so now keep another hexadecimal digit next to that and you can able to place it now now what we do is so we have to put this display connected both the displays to here how do we do that so here is a challenge so what is the challenge here now so okay now this a bus is an 8 bit bus it's an 8 bit bus but every hexadecimal display requires 4 bit so this is also 4 bit one nibble this is also 4 bit but the bus is 8 bit so what you do you have to split 8 bit bus into two 4 bit buses so whenever you want to connect two buses of different sizes or two circuits which require different bus widths what we can do is we can use a concept called so splitter so go to the wiring take a splitter bring the splitter here now configure the splitter 
now what is the bit width in means how many bit data is coming now 8 bit data because why the the bus which is the coming out of the program count is an 8 bit address so i'll make the 8 bit now all the 8 bits of the bus to be grouped into two so pan out is two i made input eight output two now i'll orient them i'll orient them as required so now keep this properly i just zoom it a little more so that you can able to observe that now keep the numbering properly now total number is what 0 to 7 8 bits are there look at that the first bus represents 0 to 3 one nibble next bus next the next bus represents another four bit it's a nibble 4 to 7 it should be very important it should not be the other way it should be 0 to 3 first and then 4 to 7 connect the bus that is splitter one end to the bus now one bus output bus first table connect to one bus the connect the other one to the other one now it's ready now whatever the data you have in the program counter you can see that that will be displayed here so this will add some value to the total circuit so that you can see that which is the instruction are getting executed always so now there is a certain options are there in the logism to make the counter work automatically all those options are there we will just try one or two options so that sometimes maybe of use now now the clock now i'll go to the simulation mode i'll make it zero i'll make it zero now every time i give a clock it increments now we say that it's a it's executed the first one getting ready for the first instruction like that it indicates which is the instruction you are executing it you want to execute if there's a large program is there automatically you want to execute without the clock that means that you need not click the clock so for that simulation option the simulate so auto tick enabled then if you click on that automatically clock is applied you can just see in the let's say clock is getting applied and it's just uh, executing the instructions one after the other if the program is around 10 instructions you want to execute one by one automatically you can always use this method so if you're not interested again go to the simulation switch off the auto tick enabled it stops at a particular place so you can manually set the counter side and come in the field so now we have understood so the logic what is required to generate the instruction from the program memory now once you have this is available now very challenging part now we are going to do it so what is the challenging part now we take out the instruction all the 16 bits on the buses one bit buses and then we group them based on the instruction requirement so for that what i will do is i'll take a splitter i'll take a splitter now this splitter should input 16 bits from this and convert into one bit buses of 16 bit sorry one bit buses so since 16 inputs are there if you convert into one bit buses it will be also 16 buses of one bit will be there so that i'll take the splitter make the bit input is equal to 16 outputs i should produce 16 one bit buses so that type 16 there now i got it this one now so arrange the orientation now keep that near to the instruction register now you can just zoom little and we will just see that how we can group all the things now i will connect the output of the instruction register to the splitter we have just connected it now i want to group all this data what is available on the 16 bits of the instruction into the different components which we have used to prepare the instruction in the beginning we know that more immediate means we have a rd component we have a value component we have a move component similarly add means we have a rd ra rb operation then data manipulation meaning all these components are present in every instruction we have to exclude we have to extract them and make them as a one component each so now I'll do one by one. I will draw the lines for every bus. It's all one bit buses. So every bus represents one bit of the instruction. So zero bus means it represents the zero bit of the instruction register. So now I am just drawing all the lines which convey some meaning at the time of instruction formulation.
Okay. Only those bits which is important, I'm just drawing it. Now the last two bits, which is indicates the move or data manipulation instruction. So that's why I required last two bits. In case of add instruction, the next two bits indicate what type of operation you are performing. I require those two bits also. So now, so now I just extended the buses corresponding to every bit. So now I make the groups what is required. Let's start with the operation. That is uh, operation means like an data manipulation instruction for all the add and or an XR you would extract three components RD, RA, RB. So now what I will do is so RD is nothing but if you look at the, the instruction if you look at the instruction formulation you can see that RD is nothing but what the first three bits will form what is called RD. Now I'll go back I'll take one uh, splitter splitter my input will be now bit width will be three bit output will be one so now instead of that sorry output also i'll make this three bit both three and three so now i'll change the orientation now Now I'll connect the bits. So first three bits forms RD. So I'll connect here. Okay. Now I'll take one tunnel. So I will call this as RD. So make the tunnel size also three bits. Connect here. So and I'll I'll name this tunnel. Name this tunnel is a RD. That means that I I have prepared now a component which is required. For execution, you can just see that RD, I got it now from the instruction. So where I'll connect this, I will connect to RD of the, I'll connect RD of, RD of the register file. So because this is where RD is available, see that no other place RD is available, I have to connect it here. So I'll take a tunnel, so I'll connect to the RD. Make the tunnel size three bits. And again, same name, you have to give it exactly the same name. So that means that whatever RD we are extracting from the instruction goes to the RD of the register file. So that is the meaning of the CPU building. Basically, you have to extract from the meaning from the instruction and give it to the proper places. So now, similarly, now I'll prepare now RB. So if you just see that, what is an RB? Three, four, five is an RB. So three, four, five. So I'll copy the same tunnel. Control C, Control V. So now I'll take three, four, and then the five. Now I will make copy of this. Control C, Control V. So now we'll connect here. I'll change the name to <coughs> RB. Now. So now we have got RB, which is extracting the data from 4, 5, 6. So I'm prepared an RB. So now go and connect wherever required. So RB to be connected to this place. So now I'll connect. RB. So it's also three bits. I'll connect to RB. Name them properly with the same spelling. RB. Now we got RB got connected. So similarly now. So now let's extract now next component what is required. We require RA. RA is 678. So now copy this tunnel. Now connect 6. Zero, 01, zero, 01, 02 you finished. 3, 4, 5, we finished. So 6, we connected it. So 7, 8. So 8, we have finished now. So now see that connection should be proper. First 3, next 3, and the next 3, I connected. Now, copy of this and name it as a 
RE. Name is RE, RE capital. So now I connected RE. <coughs> so connect this RE to the, the place where RE is supposed to go. So RE has to go to this place. So now, so take another channel. Make three bits and connect to here. Now R A is done. Name it properly. Same name. So R A. Now, so now we connected R A, R B, and R D, and it is connected to the proper places. R A, R B, R D. We have done it. Mm -hmm. Now I connected RA, RB, RD. Now it extract other operations. Now what is else required for the year? You can see that I will extract operation. It is a bit number 12 and 13. So now I'll take one splitter. It is two, two, I have to configure them. It is there already two and two is there. Change the orientation. So now operation should be connected to 13 and 14, 13 and uh, 11, 12 and 13, 12 and 13. So I'll take this. Connected. Similarly, so now I connected 12 and 13. Now take a tunnel, name them as a OP. So make the size of the tunnel two bits <clears throat> and connect this to. Now <clears throat> configure this as OP operation. Now see that in the diagram, where is OP should go to the operation? OP should go to the ALU. Now take another tunnel here. Connect that to the ALU. So now I connected OP to your name them as OP operation. Now, so now I've extracted what is required for data manipulation instructions. Everything I extracted. Only thing is <clears throat> I should know that whenever it is 0, 0, the last two bits 14, 15. It is a data manipulation instruction. So I have to get the meaning for that. So, so what I will do is uh, I have to look at the bits 14 and 15. If both are 0, 0, I have to generate one signal that's called as data manipulator operation. So that output I have to use to connect ALU output to the uh, register file input. So we will finish that also. So now what I will do is I'll require some logic which will look for pin number 14 and 15. When both are 0, 0, it should generate one output. Just say that it's a data manipulation operation. So we will use that output later. Now, since a gate is sufficient for that doing, so I'll go to the gates. I'll take AND gate. You can take OR also. I can I take, just take an AND gate. I take the gate here. I will reduce the size of the gate to narrow. So then I want to, when it is 0, 0. Now what is my requirement? When both 15 and 14 are 0, 0, output should be 1. So for that, what we have to do? I have to invert both 15 and 14 and then give it to AND gate. If both are inverted, it becomes what? 0, 0 becomes 1, 1. Whenever both are inputs are 1, 1, output becomes 1. So instead of putting an inverter, there is an option is there in the logic scene. Select the component and gate. Go to the option called negate one is there. Negate one means invert the input. So make it yes. Similarly, negate two, invert the input. So invert the input. So yes, and make it now. You can see that putting negation symbol or symbol like this bubble in front of the and gate. That means that the inputs are inverted and given to the and gate. Now, which is I supposed to connect? 14 I supposed to connect here. 14 I connected here. And then 15 I connected here. 
and the one signal. So just make sure that it should be connected to only input. So I'll connect and do that. Now, so 14, 15 connected. So output becomes a data manipulation instruction. So I will take one tunnel in the winding circuit. So it's a one bit, it's only one bit. So I just name them as a data manipulation instruction. I'll say data. That means that whenever this is one, this tunnel point will become one. That means that we're executing a data manipulation instruction. So now we have extracted all the meanings, what is there in the data manipulation instruction. We'll do the same thing for a more instruction now. So now I'll go to the more instruction. Just see that what are the values required. Now in the more instruction, so RD is the one component we extract. The last bit is what? 0, 1, 2. It's already done. The last 0 bit, 0, 1, 2, it's already RD. That's why I have selected in the instruction template the last three bits for RD. So whenever you prepare instruction template, you have the freedom to choose any bits. But choose the bits such a way that it's easy to design the circuit. So I have purposefully have taken the last three bits so that I can extract the data for both the move instruction and for the add instruction. Next. So RD is already extracted. Now I'd extract what? Number. <clears throat> so the move instruction is contains inside the instruction itself the number. The move instruction as a part of the instruction, since it's an immediate addressing mode, the number to be loaded, the operand itself is stored what? In the part of the instruction. Now in which bits it is stored? Bit number three, four, five, six. So I have to extract three, four, five, five, six and then call them as a some number. So now I will take one splitter, make the size four and four because it's a four bit, I require it, four bit. Again, this is a four bit, four bit bus. So then, now, so now identify which are the four bits which forms the number. So we have seen that. So bit number three, four, five, six. So now bit number three, four, five, six. So I'll take this here, four, five, and the six. So now name them as a number. So take one tunnel, take one tunnel, just make the tunnel of size four bit, four bit, connect that and name that as a number, N-U-M. So it's a number which is being stored as a part of the more immediate instruction. So I'll say number. So now number or value, whatever can call it is. So now, now we have to extract the meaning of the number instruction. When the last two bits are one, one, it is a meaning carries that is what instruction stored in the instruction register is a more instruction. So we'll generate one bit for that. So again, since it's a one bit generation required, gate is sufficient. I'll take an AND gate, place that, and make it size narrow. So now when both 14 and 15 are one, one, it's a more instruction. So no, no inverter and so enable no inverter or bubble is required at the input of the gate. So I'll take the 14. So connect to the AND gate input. Take the another one, connect to the another input. So I just connect it. Now take the tunnel and name that output. So tunnel is a one bit. It is a more instruction, more immediate. So I'm just storing that to here. So now, so now we have all the required information for the move and the data manipulation session. We brought it out of the instruction register. Now always remember that. <coughs> always remember that the you may ask the question, sir, four, four, three, four, five, six is already connected num the same thing is also connected to the register why it's both are connected to the same point but instruction is different when the first two bits indicate it is a zero zero i will be using only r a r b r d at that time i am not using a number when the 14 15 is one one it's a more instruction then only i'll use what num and r d use i other things so that means that even though we draw from the same points 
it is not relevant in some instruction it is relevant in some other instructions so now so we will just see that wherever required have we connected all the points now so look at the connections we made now now whatever not connected you start connecting now now what is not connected now here so the bus a of the register file should be connected to the the bus a should be connected to what operand a of the alu the bus b of the register file which is connected is connecting to the operand b that means that two registers whose output connect to ab are fed to the alu now so we have used re rb rd we have used op so now what is left out number is left out mo and data is left out now in the mo instruction the data to the register file is coming from the number so i have to copy the number what is coming from here number and i have to connect to the input so the number to be loaded into the required register so that num to be connected to the input in the mo instruction but whereas in the data manipulation instruction answer is generated by the alu alu output o to be connected to the input and the answer to be stored in the register file so here is a contrast in a mo instruction the number to be connected to the input in the data manipulation instruction answer of the alu o should be connected to the input i cannot do both if i connect both of these o also connect to the input number also connect to input again what so what is the basic rule outputs should not be shorted together so if you short outputs together it will short the circuit and circuit will damage so i cannot do it then what is the logic you have to follow so we have to use this this what is called mo and data signals what we generated whenever the mo is asserted whenever the mo is enabled that means that mo becomes one at that time i have to make sure that the number to be connected to the input whenever data is generated that means the data becomes one at that time the o of the alu to be connected to the input so for this either you can use a multiplexer to do this job you can use you can design the multiplexer in circuits and do it so i use instead of multiplexer i use other logic called as tri state buffers which we have studied in the unit 5 of the theory a buffer tri state buffer so just observe how i am doing it so now i'll go to the, the wiring so i'll go to the gates i'll pick up the buffer called controlled buffer controlled buffer is called as a tri state buffer now i'll put on buffer here so let's understand the meaning of this buffer now so the buffer has got one input and one output will be there you can see this is the input and this is the output and this buffer has also has got what is called one control line is available whenever this control line is made one the input will be copied to the output it's like a shorted insight whenever the control input is zero that means that whatever the input we give it will not be copied to the output like a disconnected the line is disconnected so we can use the simple tri state buffers to selectively connect whatever we require into the output at any moment of time so now i'll use this tri state buffer now i'll configure the tri state buffer now data bits is how much data bits is 4 bit why the input uh, o is a 4 bit alu now this input is also 4 bit so i made input output 4 bit so now i'll connect input of this to here now similarly i will connect the control buffer with a tunnel so whose name is uh, data manipulation that is data instruction so now i'll name this tunnel as data because why so we have named the tunnel whenever 14 15 pins are 0 0 this data becomes one at that time only we should enable this this one now at that time when that condition is satisfied i will connect this and connect to here i do it. so now i finished one so now what will happen only for data manipulation instruction output is connected to the input now to do the same thing for the addition i'll take <clears throat> one more buffer
Home port control broker, I'll take it. Now, now configure the buffer to four bits, four bits. Now input to this will be coming from a tunnel called value or number. So number, so I'll create a tunnel and name that as a four bits, uh, make it four bits and name it as a Name is a NUM, NUM. You can take value. Whatever the name you use there, that you have to connect it here. So that means that I've extracted the number from the instruction. So I named as a number there in the instruction register output. So I've taken that number, I'm feeding it here. Now, which is controlled by the Moo instruction. Now I'll make another tunnel. I'll connect it here. So it's it's a one only one bit. I'll name it as a it's a more instruction. That means that only for more instruction, it should be activated. This should be activated. I connect it here. Now, now this to be connected to what? Same input. Now, always, now we made the logic. So what is this logic we made? For the more instruction, the number which is extracted from the instruction or which is stored as a part of the instruction will be passed to the input and stored in the register file. For the data manipulation instruction, answer will be generated by the ALU. That will be connected and connect to the input and, and the result goes to the required list file. Instead of these two buffers, you can use a multiplexer logic also. You can build it. So multiplexer also you can use it, but buffers will reduce the hardware cost. So now you see that all the connections, we made it now, everything. So nothing is left. Any of this circuit, you want to observe it, right click on that, go to the view ALU, you can go there. You can see that what logics are there, what is there, anything is missing out like that, you can able to see that. Now, to go back to the previous circuit mine, double click on the mine on the left side. So you go to the same place. So similar, right click on the register file, go to the view register file, you can just see that what is there here, everything you can able to observe here. So once you observe, you want to go back, click on the double mine again, you come back here. Now, see that what connection is left out, clock is given here, clock is given here we have to give the clock to register file so i'll create so one more channel i'll copy this and place this to the now clock is given now verify in the simulation mode clock is coming to every place just keep on clicking it see that clock is reaching every place now clock is reaching to every place now 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 once all the connections are done double verify no connections are left out now go to the state now clear all the registers whatever you have done it that means that so i can clear all the registers here now how do you clear the register content something is already there go to the register file right click on the view register file now go to the place wherever the number is there just click on that and enter the number zero so now i'm clicking zero now i'm clicking zero i've done it now now so after doing go to the main so I'm in the simulation mode now. Just see that clear the program counter to zero zero. Now, so now the program counter is zero. Now we want to run the instruction execution. Now it may work in some cases. In some of you, for some of you, it may not work because of the mistakes you would have done in the, the circuit. So we have to troubleshoot it. I'll teach you how to troubleshoot the circuit so that it is easy for you also to troubleshoot if it does not work. Now, so now I'll start troubleshooting the whole of the system that mean that now all the connections are made i have to execute the program now the whole program i have to execute now now make sure that program is stored in the memory now i stored all the three instructions in the memory now make the program counter is equal to zero zero now first instruction i want to execute it now give the two clock pulses now see that go to the simulation mode click the now you got the c02 first instruction what was the first instruction? If you remember the, your sheets, what you written down in the morning, it's a move four to R4. Now click on the value number. See that four is there. Yes, it's correct. Four is there. Now click on the move. See that move is one. Yes, move is one. So R4, destination should be R4. Click on that. Just see that four. That means that the instruction is being coded properly and all the information has been extracted and available required tunnels. Yes or no? Now go to the here and see that at the register file is it coming the data now since it's a more instruction the data number 
is coming here and 4 is available at the available the input 4 is available at the input now rd click on the destination is there that means that 4 is proper input is proper then if i give a more clock per cycle the data what is available will be returned to the r4 keep observing the left side now everything is 0 0 now if i give one more clock cycle r4 will get the data 4 i'll give one more clock cycle now so now 4 you got it that means that we are successfully executed the first instruction on the cpu designed by us only you have designed your own cpu and made the instruction executed on your cpu so now look at the second instruction now c 0 to a now automatically second instruction has come and sitting on the instruction register now see the meaning of that move immediate 5 or 2 so see the number now 5 is available or the destination register is 2 is proper so here also the input is 2 is available here sorry input 5 is available and the destination register is 2 now give one more clock cycle now you can just see that r2 will be getting the 5 now you got the 5 now r2 got the 5 so we have successfully executed the second instruction now the third instruction is automatically coming and sitting in the instruction register so now what is the instruction 0 1 1 7 now see all the components this instruction represent at r4 r2 and r7 so now see that meaning add instruction data manipulation is one that means that so till that point it's correct add instruction is there now add instruction r4 is ra click on the ra so it's a four correct then r2 r2 is a rb click on that it's two it's correct you have to store the answer in r7 destination register seven it's correct so that means that and look at the operation add means zero zero up four zero zero that means that all the required informations which has been encoded as a part of the 0117 instruction and instruction as available here now 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 observe the same thing on the buses here see that on the alu so do i got four four is nothing but what so contents of the register so register four is available on the bus here now similarly look at the bus the contents of the register so r4 r2 that is r2 register available here that means that since you have supplied the ra you connected from here ra rb and rd so these two registers ra rb will be able to put the data into the corresponding a bus and the b bus now contents of register r4 contents of register so r2 is available here now alu immediately gives the result it does not require any time as soon as you give the data the beginning of clock cycle you get the data so 5 plus 4 what is an answer operation is what zero zero addition now look at the output it's nine so nine answer is there at output of the alu now since it's enabled now see look at enabled move is not enabled now the bus is what if you give a clock cycle that plus four is added and the answer will be stored in the register r7 we indicated r7 because you can see that the station register is r7 now i'll give a clock cycle now see that five plus four is added and it's stored in the nine so third instruction is executed successfully similarly we are doing xr operation xr of r4 r2 and uh, storing in the r6 so r4 contains what value four so then r2 contains five so that is one zero one this is one zero zero so so we should get the, the result into the register r6 so now we'll execute another instruction so it goes to the R6 and it becomes a 1. That is an answer of XR operation. So now we have successfully executed all the four instructions stored in the, the memory. So like this, you have to execute the instruction and see the registers are observed here. So like this, you can write a few more programs which involves the R and add and the more instructions. Write variety of combination change that program in the program memory and execute one by one and see that results are observable there. So this is what you're supposed to design the circuit. So and take the printouts and attach to the lab record for the part B. Can you stop sharing? Sorry, can you stop recording, Mohan? Oh, yes, sir.